Hi everyone, it's Simon Keeling here. Should I be talking a little bit quieter this morning, just in case you're feeling like this fella? <clears throat> no, no, why should I? Um, <clears throat> I hope you had a, a great Christmas day and uh, enjoyed the enjoyed the festivities. Thanks again for watching. And just a brief reminder that these pages are kept free of charge by the adverts you see around the screen here. So if you do see one you like, click on it, go through to it. It generates revenue for us and it shows the sponsor that you like what we're doing too. Um, so happy St Stephen's Day to you. Um, we've got some changes taking place on the uh, model runs overnight and something I think we probably need to um, to take notice of um, got a developing theme starting to take place now in the models I was talking yesterday of this sort of middle part of January has been the potential for things to go colder and I'm starting to pick up some uh, guide some backup to that from the models this is the seven to ten day means from ECMWF on the left here GFS on the right and it's in the 500 millibar flow now what I want you to notice is here's the UK under here look Below normal heights to the north of us, above normal to the south. That's the same on both of the model runs look. Above normal to the north, below normal to the south. Now, lines close together look across the Atlantic. This indicating the jet stream there. So this is actually um, leading us to a more unsettled spell of weather anyway. These charts are valid from a week today. So that's going to be Monday the 2nd through to Thursday the... Uh, is that the 5th? Through to Thursday the 5th of January. It's that period that we focused on. Now, look, we'll look at the ECMWF and the GFS, but I, really the ECMWF is the one I'm looking at more closely because here's the jet stream, look, coming across the Atlantic. So we've got the left exit region of the jet stream in here. So this is indicating that um, there'll be more developed areas of low pressure getting across the Atlantic into the British Isles. So I think things turning increasingly windy through this New Year period. Um, gales, severe gales possibly in the north and the west without breaks of rain too. High pressure down to the south, jet streams still in evidence, so although it will be breezy, it's not going to be quite as windy as it is further north. I think the key to this though is the difference between the two models here, and that's in building the heights off Newfoundland. Look, the ECMWF builds those heights off Newfoundland, the GFS doesn't. Now the result of the, of the ECMWF building that is that if you trace these height lines back, look at the source region for the jet stream. It's here, northern parts of Canada, and eventually you can take that all the way around to the pole. So real cold air coming in, meeting warmer air coming up from the eastern coast of the states. These two colliding, and it's these that are generating the jet stream. Now, with this ridge building, if it does build in off the eastern seaboard of the states, what we could see is this trough digging even further down to the west and to the north of the British Isles and the effect of that would be to introduce cooler conditions around the sort of 12th to the 15th period. I think that's a little bit early but that's what you'd inferred from the charts. Now also notice the high pressure building up here towards the pole, the above normal height showing on the um, on the ECMWF. Now should that topple off the pole and come southwards we could find the position where high pressure develops north of the British Isles and we get a north to northeasterly flow coming in around the middle to the second third of the month. That would bring cooler conditions. Now that's just the ECMWF. Look at the GFS, it's a different story. We've got still got the jet stream blown across the Atlantic, left exit region in here, bringing storms to the north, lighter winds to the south, although still quite breezy, but dry conditions down there too. Follow the jet stream lines back, and the ones across Scotland, yes, are generating across central parts of Canada, but not the frozen waste of the far north of Canada and the North Pole, and the ones to the south really are coming in from um, from sort of south eastern parts of the state, and much warmer, warmer conditions. So a little bit of a discrepancy between the two, but still look, high pressure, it's showing above normal heights across the pole, and the result of this could again be to for this to topple off the pole, nudge all this area southwards, take the jet stream further south of the British Isles, and build pressure to the north. And I'm suspicious that's what might happen. In fact, Captain Bob has been hinting at that too, that he's looking towards the north for high pressure to be building. Quick look at the um, uh, the Arctic Oscillation, and this is from the GFS2 from last night. And notice, it's this steady fall off in the index, which is hinting that these winds gradually around the Arctic Circle are gradually becoming lighter. That's the prevailing westerly winds. And this is a signal for cooler conditions. You see, it's really getting in towards the 10th, 11th time before um, they get near towards neutral territory. But I think the signal we need to take from these is that there could be 
this cooler weather starting to get its act together. And similarly, on the um, North Atlantic Oscillation, we're in positive territory, look, but it gradually, slowly, slowly sinks towards these neutral levels. And notice how each run of the, uh, the spaghetti here is almost in that positive territory. It stays within that territory and slowly eases its way back to become more negative. Sorry, to become more neutral. So the overall theme from this is a gradual cooling of conditions in January. Not sudden blast of cold air, but gradual cooling off. And this is why I think that the first half of the month is likely to be warmer than normal across much of Scotland. In fact, much of England and Wales as well. But Scotland perhaps dipping into nearer normal conditions. And then towards the middle to the second third of the month, we get colder. We could see proper winter coming in, proper winter weather arriving there. Don't get thinking it's last year's level, because I don't think it is. But I do think that we need to prepare for this wintry weather the middle to the end of January. Of course, things can change. So we'll keep you updated as we go through the coming days and weeks. But that's how things look just at the moment. Again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the advertisers. If you see one you like, click on it and go through to their site. And do tell your friends about us. Of course, we're on Twitter at Weather School, and you can look for us at weatherschool at facebook.com too. So, thank you for watching. Keep the sun shining, and enjoy your Boxing Day.